If I can't keep my head held high enough, I'll just be love and watch the smiles come. Bring my spirits up. There's some shit I like to fix, but I still know that I'm blessed. All right, we're here at the airport. I'm getting my anti COVID antibody test today to see if I had COVID. I'm gonna get a COVID test. I know I'm not positive, but it's part of what they do. And then I'm gonna do another COVID test on Wednesday and then Friday's my procedure. Um, there's been some complications and things and we're trying to figure out if it's COVID related, if possibly shingles or what. So I'm gonna be going in this trailer here in a minute. Hi guys, I am headed to the hospital for some pre-op tests. I'm gonna do a little drive and talk with you guys. I found a way to secure the phone so it won't slide all over. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> you won't be looking at the clouds. So I'm gonna get on Highway 101 here, head into San Luis Obispo, and I'm gonna update you a little bit as we go. Get on the highway here first to concentrate on this. <clears throat> it's a beautiful sunny day. It's not that hot. My thermometer reads 50 degrees, so sunny but chilly. All right, so uh, a few months back, I was supposed to get a new protocol screening. For those of you who haven't watched this part on my channel or not sure what's going on, let me set the stage a little bit. Uh, my mother died in her 40s of ovarian cancer, which prompted me to get the genetic testing. And unfortunately for me, I'm BCRA1. We just call it BRCA1. Flows off the tongue a little bit better. So that means a lot of interesting things related to my life. Obviously, the first thing I did is I quit smoking. I try to eat organic foods. I try to not eat meat and dairy. I don't hardly ever drink alcohol, just special occasions. Just things that are known to cause cancer. Sugar, I try not to intake too much sugar. So, uh, let's see. I, I was confirmed to have the BRCA mutation in 2010. Okay, so I've been living with this for over a decade. I did have prophylactic uh, double mastectomy and reconstruction. I had the ovaries removed. I basically follow all the protocol to help me live a long life. I've already outlived my mother by many years, which is so sad. 40 is just way too young. And my mother, by the way, was a fairly healthy person but very stressed, I'm not gonna get into all that, but I think the mutation caught on with the stress is why the cancer was able to overtake her. I'm not gonna talk about mom today, uh, maybe another episode. So I get colonoscopies every three years, and every time I do, they cut out lots of pre-cancer, unfortunately, so I'm grateful that they're able to get it out before it forms into cancer. Otherwise, I probably would've passed away young like my mom. I remember one time I told the doctor, thank goodness they cut this out, otherwise I'd have full-blown cancer. The doctor looked at me and he said, no, otherwise you wouldn't be alive. So that really hit home. And just to give you the percentages and why I am such an advocate to stay ahead of this cancer gene is basically an 80% chance if you just do nothing that you will die of cancer.
okay? Some people still don't get the ratio when I explain that. But what I like to simply say is if there was an airplane and they said, it's a free flight, get on. It's not gonna cost you a penny, but it has an 80% chance of crashing. So do you wanna get on the plane or do you wanna stay off the plane? And most of us would not take the right on the plane. We've got the ocean to the left. Hopefully you can see a little of it. I, I can't move the phone around so I gotta drive, concentrate hands free. I haven't been sleeping too good. I've been really stressed. And um, we thought I had COVID a few, like a month and a half ago. I just got the antibody test, it was negative. And there was sores that came around that same time. We thought it was related to COVID. Obviously it's not. I have a pending shingles test. And then yesterday in therapy, uh, it looks like it might be cortisol, basically manifesting outside my body in the form of sores, which if you Google that, you'll see some pretty horrific stories. We all know stress will destroy us and I'm doing my best to try to stay focused. There's a lot of other things going on. I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about what's coming up medically for me. hoping it will give other folks, not inspiration, but a little more bravery, realize you're not alone, and even if it's not related to a cancer gene, any kind of medical stuff. I've had over 30 uh, surgeries in my lifetime, surgical procedures, I should say, uh, from birth. I was born basically deformed, and they didn't think I would be able to walk, but thank goodness to technology that was fairly new at the time, they were able to fix my feet well enough to walk. They don't look too great, but they work good enough for me. I do have some PTSD basically from year after year after year, month after month in the hospital. I would spend a good portion of my summer in the hospital from birth to eight years old. As a matter of fact, it was the medical doctor that discussed with my parents that the medical procedures were causing too much mental damage to me and it was better to just stop where we were and not try to fine tune it anymore or do a plastic surgery to make the feet look prettier or any of that. My, my little, my little eight year old soul couldn't take anymore. So that's, I don't know, I just have about 10 times the anxiety that most people do when they're going to have something like this. Later today, I'll go over the handouts and explain the surgical procedure better. Of course, before I had my mastectomy, I would have to have biopsies every time I had a mammogram and there were stereotactic biopsies, which were scary for me. It's basically like a big metal straw that they do a core sample, like poke a hole into your boob and pull that core sample out and test it uh, for pathology. So I'm glad I don't have that every year. But this new procedure will be added to the three year regimen. Every three years I'll go back to this procedure. I also, newly this year, a uterine scan was added because thickening of the uterus is common for folks now that had a hysterectomy of only um, tubes and ovaries. There's a certain word for that type of partial hysterectomy. I don't, I'm not up on all the medical terms. There's too many, there'd be too many to remember. So, uh, the uterine scan's nothing. It's just like an ultrasound in and out. And the bone scan, because I have a, I'm losing bone density because I had to have that hysterectomy, removing the ovaries, partial hysterectomy, removing the ovaries in, in my 40s, so that affects your bones. Uh, and there's a whole regimen with that. That's part of why I do yoga once a week and walk as much as I can. So I'm gonna dial it back a little bit to the therapy session yesterday with the therapist and we talked a lot about cortisol and most of you know about how it makes you gain weight, which yes, that's happening too. But the sores, they're horrific. They're something new. I don't even want to show you guys pictures of them actually. They're gross. It's embarrassing. Painful and burning and itchy. And right now I've started treating them with Manuka honey, which seems to be helping a little bit. 
but it sucks because all the doctor's visits are backed up, been waiting for test results that I don't even know exactly what it is. So when I do know, I'll let you guys know. But the therapist said one of the only things that can help with cortisol is exercise. And she doesn't mean getting in the gym and going crazy, but just even the slightest cardio, which walking would, would uh, fall under that. So I think hopefully today after this pre-op testing, pre-surgical testing, whatever you want to call it, surgical procedure testing, I might try to force myself to go for a little walk and I'll take you guys along because it's a place I've been wanting to go, but we'll see. But that's maybe. to the hospital where the procedure is going to be done Friday morning. I'll arrive bright and early. I check it at 8. Procedure starts at 10.30. It'll be about a five-hour procedure, hopefully, on the short side. That's what we're hoping. There's several outcomes that can uh, arrive out of the test. If any of you have had colonoscopies, you know that you go in, they're going to check your colon. If they find any polyps or tumors, they're going to remove them. They're going to biopsy them. I mean, it's pretty much all done, and then you wake up and they tell you what happened. This is similar but different. So they're going to stick a camera down, and then they're going to use ultrasound to um, scan my pancreas because pancreatic cancer is now high numbers linked to my genetic mutation. And a dermatologist is also added to my regimen as of this year. So every year as they develop, procedures, there's more things that I do to stay ahead of cancer. So they'll stick the camera down and hopefully they'll look at my pancreas and say, my, what a beautiful pancreas you have. And then they, I wake up and I go home and I come back in three years. Or, hopefully if I got over too early. Or, I could go in there and find little lesions, just small lesions that maybe aren't a big problem, but they want to know more about. Oh, there goes an ambulance over on that side. I don't know if you can see it. So they'll do a biopsy if it doesn't look too concerning, and they'll wake me up. I'll get to go home, and then when the pathology's back, they'll let me know. Third case scenario, they could go in there and see something that they're not going to want to find possible tumors, lesions, things that actually might need to be surgically removed then and there because they're large, because they're suspicious, whatever the decisions the expert eye of the doctor makes. Unfortunately, if that is the case, I uh, will be kept at the hospital for one day, two days, three days, I think you said four days max, depending. So we are all hoping and praying that it's one of the first two, preferably the first one. I also remind myself any of the outcomes are blessed because I'm blessed where they can actually look at that pancreas and catch anything before it happens. I just don't want to stay in the hospital. I really don't. I've spent so much time in the hospital. Like the doctor said when I was eight, it's not good for my brain. Oh, can you see the Madonna Mountain there? Lots of people hype on that. It's actually really pretty. Things are uh, nice and green. Okay, now I gotta watch for my exits. I'm gonna take the Highway 1, CA1 Toro Street exit. Yeah, the, all this to the left is uh, the Madonna Inn and then all of their uh, equestrian area. And over there they have like an events hall and then the mountain and the trails. And I wanted to take you guys there for their Christmas display, but unfortunately there was a surge of the big C, not cancer, the other one. And um, I just wanted to play it safe, basically. Yes, yeah, so I did a COVID, I think I mentioned that the antibody test was negative, which I was hoping that I already had COVID because I don't want to be exposed to it here. But I trust in the Lord. I know they test everybody before they come into the hospital. And real 
really this is all up to God. So I pray a lot. Bobby's trying to keep everything low key for me. My kids are trying to keep things low key. Everybody's just, you know, like my therapist said, everybody just needs to give you space for a few days so that you can keep your stress level down. Okay, here's our exit. This is also how you would go to Hearst Castle or Morro Bay. Same exit here. See the beautiful mountains. This is such a weird, it dumps you right out into this neighborhood. I, I don't like these exits. Slow is trippy. All right, so it's gonna be right on Murray. <laughs> I don't know what speed that, oh yeah, here we go. I know where I am now. Let's see, I had my ovaries removed at this hospital. My daughter had a benign thyroid cyst removed at this hospital. So there's a few hospitals around. I chose this one because I've had good experiences and it's familiar and for me familiarity goes a long way. So we're about to pull into the hospital here and my instructions are to park in the red zone near the ambulance bay and someone will come up and stick some q-tips up my nostrils back in 2020 i had a covid test and man they basically touched my brain with this giant q-tip in one nostril and just past sunday i had another test and they took a little q-tip and just swirled it around the inside of my nose oops i should have turned there each nostril just kind of swirled it around and counted to 10 or something she was pretty gentle uh oh i passed it can I get there from the back, I hope? Meh. <laughs> I hope I can get there in this way. I don't know what this is. No. Oh, no. I messed up. I gotta go around the block and figure this out. See? I get distracted talking to you guys. Okay, yeah, I can get in the back way because I know where I am still. This building here on the right is where my daughter's surgeon was. So I can get in this way. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. I'm just going to cover a little bit more that's on the handouts related to the procedure and some of the new protocol. So this talks about what people should do when basically once you know you have the mutation. I've passed all that. I've already done the uh, risk reducing mastectomy and I've also done the RRSO. That's sep sepingo uproectomy. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. They recommend it between 35 and 40. I was a little bit older than that. But that's been done as well. And if women, uh, we're now knowing we're at increased risk of serious uterine cancer when we have the BRCA1 gene. Um, I was on estrogen for a while as far as hormone replacement therapy, but they stopped that protocol years ago. I always want to touch on the fact that men can also be affected by these genes and they can still get breast cancer and these other cancers. Luckily, my son does not carry the gene. He's been tested. Of course, they want you to be educated on the symptoms of all the various cancers you're at risk for. And I mentioned earlier about the dermatologist recommend an annual full body 
Skin exam examination is recommended to screen for melanoma. That's the best screening they have for it at this point. The insurance would not approve the dermatologist last year. So we're gonna try it again since I have new insurance and hopefully this year I can get that screening. That's the other thing. Doctors tell you that you should have this stuff. Your life depends on it. And then insurance companies don't like to pay for stuff. So yeah, the medical industry is a complete and total joke. I'm not gonna go on a tangent about that, but it's ridiculous. And also realize when you carry this mutation, uh, your family's at risk. For example, my sister does not have the gene. I do. Obviously, my mother did. My son does not. The good thing is, if you carry the gene, you have a 50-50% chance of passing it on. And if you don't, like my son, for example, he, it doesn't uh, skip generations. So he doesn't have to worry about giving it to his children or anything. Continuing on, uh, the new pancreas screening, of course, we've talked about is recommended now in uh, select individuals that are at high risk. Um, and it lists all the genes. Look at all the different cancer genes that are out there now. Big list of them. And of course, I've already mentioned mine and it's highlighted there. So they'll do an endoscopic ultrasound because I do fall in that high risk category. And they go on to talk about how having a pre-screen gives you a much larger chance of surviving the cancer rather than just waiting till there's symptoms and they go in and look for it. So that's of course encouraging and why I do the pre-screenings. I guess depending on the risk, um, some folks will start screening as early as 30 years old with this test I'm doing. Uh, once again, following the page down to my genetic mutation, they recommend that to start around 50 years old. So I'm pretty well on track for that. So yeah, that's pretty much all we know for now and I'll let you guys know in a separate episode how it all went and uh, what to expect etc I'm going to spend the rest of the day just relaxing and getting centered and staying mentally well bye guys I love you if I can't keep my head held high enough I'll just speak love and watch the smiles come thanks for watching my spirits up don't forget to stop and smell the flowers there's some shit I like to fix but I still know that I'm blessed